Fada. My man Fada. Coach Phil, what's good, boy? How's everything? I'm just waiting for some more people to come on here. Aunt Terry, what's going on? How you doing? It's good to see you. Long, long time, no, no speak. Sis, Steph, what's going on? I got to come through for a plate, Steph. <laughs> for real. Absolutely, bro. Thank you, man. Prayer all is well with you, too, man. You and the fam. Okay, Steph, so you finally got to join one of my lives, man. That's good. Probably because Brianna's going to be on. Oh, okay, I see you. Yep, I'm going to call you out. It's all good, but I appreciate you. Victoria. Nah. What's up, nah? What's going on with you? So... You know, we're starting this uh, conversations of the heart, man. Um, it's just something I really wanted to to do, um, you know, because we're in a climate, you know, where people are suffering in silence and stuff like that. So we just want to just, uh, you know, I just want to give people a platform to come on and talk, um, give give some people some time to vent, you know, give people some time to educate, uh, to share some, some 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 stories, some real some real talk with the people here, man, and um, you know uh give people a platform to to help heal you know strategize and stuff like that um so we're gonna do that i'm just waiting on uh brianna she she should be here in a couple minutes um to get this talk going teddy grand dj teddy grands what's going on brother nah did you catch the one with court So how's everybody doing on here, man? What's going on? Talk to me. How, how's everybody doing? man so how's everybody doing man oh, what's going on Steph what's going on man how and how are you now nah, what's good we gotta get on a call now okay Brianna's in the building all right Hey. Hey, what's going on? Oh, you know, live. Yeah. Oh, for sure. How are you? What's for up? For sure. Good, good, good. I'm just here chilling, man, with my quarantine beard, man. That's it. And my fro. <laughs> That's it. What's um. Up? So. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. I appreciate you coming on. Um. 
So I just want to introduce you. You know, I'm going to let you kind of take it in a second. But uh, you are um, somebody who I've known for years. Uh, you are an entrepreneur. You are the founder of the B&B Foundation. Um, you know, um, you are somebody that I, I would say is a leader of the new school, somebody who is who has accelerated very, very quickly and has found a, a lot of success. Um, so I just want to say um, that I admire you um, and I appreciate you coming on here um, and just give my followers um, a little bit um, of what you've done and what you've accomplished uh, so far. OK. All right. So um, hi, everybody. There's a couple people on. Um, so again, like Terrence has said, I'm the founder of the B&B Foundation. So I'll talk a little bit about that and um, and just some other mm -hmm. things that I like have interest in and have done. Um, mm -hmm. So the B&B Foundation, I started right after graduating from college. So I went to college at Stony Brook in Long Island. Um, go see wolves. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was kind so of one of I want I want people to. I want people to know how old were you when you started the B and B Foundation. I want people to understand this. Yeah, yeah. So I was twenty. Um, I graduated. Mm. I think I had just turned twenty when I graduated from school mm -hmm. from Sony. Um, so it was kind of one of those things where it was just very close, right? It was like I mm -hmm. just graduated, like knew all about scholarship, financial aid, that whole pain mm -hmm. process. Graduated with debt, and mm -hmm. you know, it was like you know, okay, I, I'm working. I was fortunate enough to have a full-time offer before I graduated. Mm -hmm. So I had some money right. in my pocket and I was like, you know what? $500 isn't a lot, but to some mm -hmm. kid that might help them buy a textbook or maybe get right. supplies that they need for college. Um, mm -hmm. So it was one of those things that kind of just made sense. You know, it's like you went to school, somebody helped you get there. I wouldn't have gone to school mm -hmm. if it wasn't for scholarships and financial aid. Um, so mm -hmm. I was like, this is just seems like the next thing to do so right. um yeah so started it i got invited to speak to um just like a, a community organization about what i was doing and mm -hmm. after that like maybe a minute two minute kind of like tidbit um one of the politicians in the audience came up to me and was like so here's a check for like fifteen hundred dollars um mm. what you're doing is great please like keep doing this um, right so that, first year one scholarship turned into six so mm. um, that's kind of like the beginning of all of that um mm -hmm. and, and it has spiraled since into this yeah foundation. absolutely yeah like i tell people all the time i was like this was not planned right like we didn't plan mm -hmm. to now you know 2020 have 40 kids who will, who won this risk this scholarship at this point 40 kids you so you 40. gave 40 kids scholarships so far for college yes Yes. It's amazing. And, yep. and you're still young yourself. I mean, that that's that's the crazy part about this whole thing for, for me to see is the evolution of how you've grown so much. Um, and first off, the first thing I really wanted to ask you was, how are you actually feeling um, today? Like, how are you doing? How are you feeling um, between all of, you know, COVID and, and all the racial tensions that's going on? Just how yeah. are you feeling? So, you know, it feels like, you know, you get that question when you walk into work, it's like, how are you? Mm. And your automatic response just like auto, it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing good, you know? And mm -hmm. I've like had to like retrain myself to answer mm -hmm. that the way that I'm actually feeling. Right. Because, you know, mm. I, and, and, and especially since, you know, my workplace is, um, I mean, it is a pretty diverse site, but more of the people that I interact with are white or right. other people of color. Um, mm -hmm. and it's like right now they're like expecting you not to be good, right? Like so, some people right. are like <laughs> right. lower. So instead of like, oh yeah, how you doing? They'll be like, how mm. are you? And they're just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you become the poster person for everything that's that's not good right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not just me. It's like most of the black people that I've spoken to at my job are kind of like, you know, either mm -hmm. some people are not saying anything at all to them or. Mm -hmm. everybody's coming up to them you know right so i think me personally today kind of was a bit of a roller coaster um i've been doing a lot right For, um in mm -hmm. a bunch of different ways and aspects family school the foundations like a lot has been happening um mm -hmm. and i felt like 
you know, I was just getting to a point where, you know, I mean, as people talk about, especially now, like burnout and, you know, how, how mm -hmm. do you maintain and self care and all these different things and things that I can yeah. talk about later. Mm -hmm. But um, today, when, when I was like on my way into the office, I was just like, is all of this for not? Like, is there anything that's going to be changed? I've been sending emails, I've been writing PowerPoints, I've been like, pushing mm -hmm. buttons here left and right and center and and um so i'm a christian like i grew up in the church and right. i was listening to this song and typically i like listen to christian music on sundays like sometimes <laughs> yeah like, classic like, yeah just like the the one you know just because yeah, yeah. i'm going to church mm -hmm. but i'm going to listen to this, this song, right? <laughs> so, right right um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just happened to, I don't know, like some of my heart was like, you know what, you're going to just play this song. Um, and it talks about just, and the song is called Won't He Do It by Corin. Right. Paul, I think her name is. Okay. And it just literally, like, I don't think I've ever resonated with the words in that song mm -hmm. like I did today, which is just like, look, he's done it for you in the past. Look at how far you Where are you he's going. Just have mm -hmm. to keep pushing, keep, and and won't he do it, right? Like, you know, right. so literally, like, so so this all happened. I was, you know, and I remember as a kid, like, you know, being in church and, like, watching my mom, like, cry. Like, you know, right. and I'm like, mm -hmm. what are you crying for? Like, yep. you never should be crying. <laughs> and when I told right. you, I was in the car just emotional listening to this song. Like, mm -hmm. wow. Like, it just fully resonated. It's like I got it in that moment that, wow, yep. look at all of these the trials and things that I've gone through. And this is mm -hmm. just another challenge. It's just another thing mm -hmm. to get through and to succeed in, right? So right. a little bit later on that day, we got an email from the CEO of GE. So I work for GE Aviation. Right. And, it, and up until this point, we've seen a lot of like flowery emails, right? We've seen mm -hmm. a lot of those like, mm -hmm. you know, we're not pieces, really gonna, yeah. right, we're gonna be politically mm -hmm. correct. You know, we're not going to actually say the things that people want to hear where, you know, they haven't said right. anything about where their money is going, where their resources are going, all these things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, and again, like I said, I've been sending emails. Left, right, center. So when I saw this email come out in Terrence, it was like, it, if you were printed out, it'd probably be like three pages long. And it was right. action steps and plans and where they're donating a million dollars and like, Mm -hmm. all of these different things and literally two days before i had presented something for our site to the general manager and our hr leader and was like y'all right. these are my these are my demands right i took that from like a different mm -hmm. template and was just mm -hmm. like you know what um we need to focus on this and then for two days later the ceo of ge to come in and essentially everything that was on my list was what he talked about in that email right. it was like I've proposed all these things, and now the CEO has just said, yes, these are the things wow. that he cares about and focuses on. So I got wow. a text from the HR leader right after that email came out. He's like, yo, did you see this? I was like, absolutely, and we are already on it. We are already wow. making the steps and, and starting to make inroads in how we're mm -hmm. going to, like, you know, continue doing the things that we're doing. Because it's not to say we haven't been doing them, right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. People in the building that, you know, are recruiting at universities, we're looking for black candidates and diverse candidates but mm -hmm. it's like we could always be doing more right so right. Um, that was just truly just like a and it just it just brought into that 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 song that, that moment head, yep just like, Yo, that moment you, you know mm -hmm. like just so so i posted something today just just telling people like this is just the beginning right right like, things that mm -hmm. we're seeing now statements that people are saying like we need to hold these people accountable to every mm -hmm. single thing they write on paper, because mm -hmm. I think, I mean, this is, this is not new. What's been going on is not new. People are just starting to nope. maybe wake up to it, but they could very right. easily fall asleep, you know, two or three months Quickly. later because it doesn't impact mm -hmm. them, you know? True. So I think that's kind of like my challenge now. That's like, all right, so how do we do this in a sustainable way that's measurable mm -hmm. so that, you know, a year from now, when you're looking at your performance metrics, if you didn't hit something that, you know, this this whole like dni metric right but actually right. making that something where if you don't hit it there are consequences right right or that maybe mm -hmm. your maybe your compensation is tied to an initiative like that so right. um so work-wise you know today was today was um a good day today actually i can say I I'm, <laughs> I'm good 
today I'm good. Right. So, yeah. and, and so being a, a leader, because you're a manager there, right? You're an engineer and, and a manager. So she's an engineer, yeah. y'all. So, um, so how has race affected you as, a, as somebody who's in senior leadership um, and who is a, a black woman, right? In senior leadership. Like, how has that really uh, affected you uh, throughout your tenure? Yeah. So, so I think I'll, I'll almost start from like, kind of like inception. So like, I'm, I mean, like, you know, like college, right? Like, so starting. Yeah. Like, right. Um, mechanical engineering classes or like just general engineering classes at any university. Mm -hmm. At right. least, you know, like what, seven years ago, um, mm -hmm. was like one of four women. Wow. Right. And mm -hmm. in some of those classes, like, the only black woman or the only black person. Right. So um, mm -hmm. already from, you know, when you're starting to just learn the material that you're going to need, you've already <laughs> noticed the disparity. Right. 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 So in those situations, you, you kind of almost build cause you're, you're doing team ex projects and things like that. So you're already learning mm -hmm. how to work with these individuals. So when I right. got into the workforce, it wasn't really something that I think, impacted me crazy because I'd already kind of navigated through it. Um, right. Yes, there were things that happened that for sure, you're just like, nah, that's definitely like a sexist comment, Asia's comment, right. racist comment. But mm -hmm. in, and in certain aspects, and I think, and I think there's, there's, there's a lot of like, you know, different ways that you can approach this. And I actually really love right. the way younger people who are coming into the workforce kind of like have very zero tolerance for some of this. Whereas I think right. when I first started, I was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a perform, I'm going to outperform everybody. I'm going to be the right. first one in, I'm the last one out. Like you will never mm -hmm. be able to say that my work is not where it is. And I will, wow. I will say something if it absolutely affects me and like, you know, in a way that I'm not going to mm -hmm. like look over. But I, at one point when I was, um, when I lived in Alabama, still working for mm -hmm. an engineering company, um, but not in not in in senior leadership or higher leadership, but I right. was a super so I still had mm -hmm. kind of like a management role. Um, right. I would have employees come up to me and just like talk to me crazy. Like I've had somebody mm. flat out call me a bitch in my face and after trying to write them up, wow. like in through it out, right? So like there's wow. certain things and then I had to still work with that person. Like that person wasn't removed from my area after I asked them to be removed. Wow. Mm. So it's it's kind of like and and you think back and you're like man what did I do you know I think just as the the type of person I am I'm I think I'm more critical of myself so I'm like could mm -hmm. I handle that situation differently did I say something that you mm -hmm. know maybe impacted the way this person felt and after reassessing that I was like no absolutely no. not I didn't say anything right. to him that I didn't say to anybody else and right. um you know and everybody knows that you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, in, so in situations like that, it's like, you know, you went through the proper channel to try and get somebody, you know, held accountable and they did. Of course. Work. Right. So, um, when I left that job and I left, um, just like corporate, if you will say, um, right. I was like, I would never come back to it unless I was in a place to make actual change or, awesome. or be able to like, yeah, to just do things that made sense, not just because somebody else was telling me to do it. So right. um, when I got the opportunity to come and work for a GE in Long Island, um, it was for a higher leadership opportunity. I'm, so, there's, right. so there's a senior level above me. So I'm kind of like mm -hmm. right underneath that. Um, mm -hmm. And that senior level, there's one woman and there's mm. one black man. Wow. So one black woman, one black man. So I'm like the only oh. black woman as close black woman. Okay. as possible. Right. Wow. So, um, you know, when, when all this kind of like hit the fan, I, I went back into the office in person as of last week. And mm -hmm. um, like the first two days, like people kind of like tiptoeing around me. And then yep. you know, mm -hmm. day three, day four, people were in my cube like, hey, so, um, you know, and, and I had said something now, uh, maybe a week or two prior to me going back into the office, because um, I'm also the president of the Women's Network for the Long Island mm -hmm. and the Pompano Beach, Florida site. And I sent something out that basically said, hey, like everything that's going on right now in the news, like you mm -hmm. do not need to engage like right. your black colleagues right now. 
right? Like, because what to you may seem as like a simple conversation. Yep. It triggers. Other triggers. People, right. Mm -hmm. To either like, you know, engage with you. Um, and then, you know, you leave and go back for the rest of your day because it doesn't really impact you. And I'm now sitting here for 20 minutes thinking mm -hmm. I said something different. Did I represent mm -hmm. that right? Did I remember that Instagram post that had that statistic fact right? You know, like, right. it's like, so, and, and in some cases, it's like the extreme where, I mean, at the time, again, working in the Alabama site, I think this was right after the death of Eric Garner. And mm -hmm. um, somebody ran up to me with like a cell phone and was like, Brie, I don't know, like, the angle, he kind of looked like he could have been doing something, but like, can't really tell. What do you think? Mm -hmm. and I literally looked at this man and I was like, and it was, it was hurtful because like, he was a like really nice person, you know, like great. Right. Person. Like every time I asked him to do anything, he was always on it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and then I was like, dude, like, I'm, we're not going to debate the nope. unarmed mm -hmm. killing of a black man right now. That man could be my uncle. Like, right. we're not, we're not doing that. So right. a few weeks ago, I said that almost as like a, you know, think about the way you're engaging black people at your workplace about these issues. Super because important. yes, there are plenty of people who will sit there and go tit to tap tit for tap with you or they kinda wanna yeah. know how you feel about a situation and that's fine. But for the people mm -hmm. that aren't, they might not even feel comfortable telling you, Hey, you know what? I don't really want to talk about this right now. You know, because right. some people, you know, they they're coming to work to maybe escape everything that's happening you know just to try mm -hmm. and like focus on something else and here you are now in their face mm -hmm. asking about it right so, so yeah it's just it's definitely been been a challenge but i think it was it was well received there were a lot of other notes in there mm -hmm. besides you know that it was kind of like hey we're gonna baseline all this is wrong white mm -hmm. women have a different privilege than all, all other black women and um people of color, right. black trans women right so um you know it's it's we're we're now coming up with like programming like how are we going to discuss this in a meaningful way mm -hmm. how, are we, how right. are we going to talk about experiences and make sure that questions that are brought in are filtered almost and do not end mm -hmm. in debate because at this point right like we know what's right right so mm -hmm. we're not gonna sit here and debate foolishness with you so right once we kind of like level set that like first of all like mm -hmm. these, these conversations are going to be uncomfortable we already know that mm -hmm. um you know and they're they're uncomfortable on both sides you know it's kind of hard to almost talk about something that you've experienced your whole life and yep. you know this other person is well how do you know for sure that that was mm -hmm. the it's a lot of right. ignorance. Yeah, it's a lot of ignorance yeah. because they, they don't even know like that you're being triggered by a lot of this stuff. They don't know that you, you might have a brother, like you have a father, you have a brother, right? You know, cousins mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. uncles, right? That this could be them and they're right. triggering you all types of reactions. And some people, yeah. they react very, very differently than maybe you might react. They might react a little bit more brash. And then they're like, oh, so wow, like, what's her problem? It's in it's, yeah. they don't understand. Exactly. So I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so, so, so with that, um, when it comes to what's going on right now, so how do you navigate and, and, and how do you make sure that your mental health is right? You know, like, what do you do to kind of, kind of like, to kind of get through the mud um, mm -hmm. between COVID and all, and all these things that's going on right now? Yeah. Yeah. So, so from when Corona kind of like first hit, um, I, so my plan was actually one of the last, I feel like, to kind of be like, mm -hmm. okay, go home. Um, like, I've talked to some friends who from like the middle of March, maybe like March 15th or whatever, they were already working remote. We didn't start right. working remotely until like the end of March, like March 27th. Mm -hmm. Like after Cuomo gave that final, like, nah, like places need to reduce their, their employees um, in the building. Mm -hmm. So I had been working remotely for almost like what, two months, two months, a little more than two months. Mm -hmm. um, right. And for me, it was actually a blessing in disguise. Um, I think in a okay. way I was just doing a lot, you know, up until that mm -hmm. point from just waking up, traveling, you know, almost two hours, it was an hour to work, an hour back um, every day mm -hmm. coming in 
just kind of like, okay, we got foundation this, we got planning for that. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, you know, I'm like tutoring my cousins. So it's my Saturdays are, are pretty much a wash. So I come in on Sunday and then Sunday, you know, by six, seven o'clock, you're like, okay, I gotta go to work, right? So right. Mm -hmm. um, the four weeks that I just stayed in my apartment was amazing. <laughs> wow. It was literally like, it was so restful um mm -hmm. and even though i didn't have a routine and that kind of bugs me i was also just mm -hmm. okay with just like you know rolling out of bed at 7 30 moving to mm -hmm. a different place to work um my job in itself was challenging in that so mm -hmm. in a program manager role um, i'm responsible for the customer interface so right. um you know our, our capacity in the plant was down like we, we were typically a heavy first shift operation with a, a light second mm -hmm. from like four to right. 12 and we went to three shifts so mm -hmm. people that i needed to talk to at like eight in the morning weren't coming into work until 12 30 at night so well, it was just challenging all around to to be able to get updates to things that i needed communicate with my mm -hmm. customers they'd be like well where's this thing and i'm like i won't know <sighs> until tomorrow because that person doesn't come in till you know five o'clock tonight right right so mm -hmm. um so that in itself had, had kind of been just just a lot so i think with that it was just managing my expectations right and then also communicating mm -hmm. that to the people that i work with so right. um you know they knew that like you know from a, at least from that perspective um i guess now that i'm we're i guess we're transitioning back in and especially with like you know everything that's going on in the news mm -hmm. and and that you know as a black woman closer to leadership you know i'm mm -hmm. being expected to like uh, and not even so much expected i think just because of the type of person that i am um, i've been involved mm. in the NAACP since i was 15 years old so social right. justice and making sure that you know we're taken care of is just like something that's in me so natural I, I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I watched like you know another senior leader who is black just kind of be like you know what i have to take thursday and friday because people keep coming to me telling me i need to do something and i cannot do it right now so in right. that moment i was like take care of yourself absolutely De like unplug mm -hmm. from this situation it is not your job to educate white people on systemic racism um mm -hmm. you need to you know and every day that you wake up and move forward mm -hmm. and, and put on your clothes and, and do whatever it is that you do, that is resistance in itself. You remaining Amen. alive and taking okay. care of yourself and your family is resistance enough right mm. now. Because, mm -hmm. um, and then I had a conversation with another one of my friends who's just like, this battle, this is, this is long. So don't right. feel like you need to be out in the trenches right now because we, we're gonna need you three months from now, when the other people who is in the trenches got to come back to really take care of themselves. Mm. So, um, you know, I, and I, I love that. To mm. share that with him, not because it was something that I just knew, but I have a lot of friends who are really well connected and who have invested in mm -hmm. me and who, you know, when I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to talk to these people. What do you think I should mm -hmm. say? Or I'm going to write up right. this draft. Can you edit it for me and make sure it looks kosher and, you know, makes sense and is politically mm -hmm. correct and all of these different things. So I think I've just leaned on my network a lot when it comes mm -hmm. to... Use your resources. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, it's one thing to kind of just pull something from social media and regurgitate it, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to understand it and to be able to then speak to it um, to be right. more different from you um so so that's kind of been a thing i think the idea of just kind of creating barriers and knowing who i'm going mm -hmm. to engage with and who i'm not i will only talk mm -hmm. to people about this if you're coming to me with like mm -hmm. how can i help like i right. see what's going on and i want to get involved how can i help i will absolutely engage with you i will tell you about some of my frustrations and how i feel and then i will give you mm -hmm. something that i think you can do so mm -hmm. um, we're planning a moment of silence for the plant next week, Tuesday. And I had kind of proposed it to the, to the team earlier this week. And it was something that uh, another leader had kind of brought up as something that we can do. And we've seen it done at other sites. But mm -hmm. I was just like, you know what? I cannot organize this. So I deputized two people to do it, right? And I was like, these two people mm -hmm. came up to me said right. that they want to do this. One is a white man, one is a black man. And I was like, this is great because also this call to action cannot just come from mm -hmm. the black people on this site. It has to come from mm -hmm. also 
right on the site because it will be received right. differently. It's one thing for me to raise my hand and be like, this is an issue, this is an issue. But it's another mm -hmm. thing for a white woman to say, no, we need to stand as an ally with everybody here on this site, with all the black people. This is not just their problem. Mm. So, or, or theirs to solve. So, um, Awesome. Um, so let, let's kind of transition into like mentorship. Um, yeah. As like I said, the B the B and B Foundation uh, um, is major. I, and I believe that you you co-founded another yes. nonprofit too. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you moving? So. <laughs> uh, yeah. You out here moving? Um, yeah. So, so for the B and B Foundation, um, I've been you know that's that's the one that I've been around since its inception. Um, and I've seen it kind of grow from, you know, from like this to now it, it's this big thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess talk about the most um, the philanthropy, like why is it so important to you? Uh, it's like you said, you've been in uh, near the NAACP since you're about 15 years old, you know? Um, and that's why I said, like, you've always impressed me since you were younger, right? Because you've always dreamed big. You've always had these big ideas, um, like an adult at such a young age. And I'd be like, wow. Like she's, she's, she's going to be something amazing and you absolutely are. Um, so talk to us about the B the BNB foundation and, and why, um, you know, that you believe is so important. Yeah. So I think this, um, over the years I've had a lot of time to reflect on that. Um, because mm -hmm. I think in certain things I just kind of move, right. It's like, okay, this yeah. looks like a need, let's just go do it. Right. And then like, mm -hmm. A few years later, I'll like reflect and be like, oh, maybe that's the reason behind why I did what I did. So mm -hmm. my parents have always been involved in ministry. I've always been involved mm -hmm. in giving back. Um, right. And, and it was something that was just impressed upon my brother and I growing up. So it, yeah. and again, when I, when I say that, like, this was something that made sense, it was literally just like, mm, I have money. They need money. I should give them money. And right. like, right. And mm -hmm. it's like, like, money isn't the only thing that gets you through college. If it wasn't for the mentors in my life, if it wasn't for right. the people who invested in me, provided me with resources, corrected my emails and told me how to do things better, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have been in the position that I'm in now for sure. So mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was really fortunate to be involved in a program called Inroads in um, mm -hmm. at Stony Brook. And Inroads is a um, college, uh, it's almost like a like an internship placement program. So they have mm -hmm. relationships with companies all across the country and, and, and um, outside of the U.S. And essentially, mm -hmm. you secure a three or four year internship at that company with the goal of placement. So during that mm -hmm. time, you're you're required to go to mandatory leadership trainings and um, like management sessions and like personality, like just everything you can think of. So they right. invest so much of their time and resources into me that when, mm -hmm. like when it came back, when it came time to give back, I already kind of had the resources just like saved somewhere. So actually right. the first membership event that we did for BNB was held um, in Rockland County, which is where the first two um, high schools are located. One of the high schools I went to and the, um, the second one in that district. Um, and, and this particular section of Rockland County is where um, all of the black and brown kids essentially go to school. Um, mm -hmm. Majority. Right? This is the majority of where right. they live. And if you know anything mm -hmm. about like just how like suburbs are redlined and property and all of that whole thing, it makes sense why, okay, right. you know, and, and these two schools are considered some of the, the worst schools in, in Rockland County in terms mm -hmm. of just like, um, in terms of just what, what you hear on the news and it's underfunded mm -hmm. and AP classes and sports are always being taken away and all these different things. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons also why I started this is because I hated that narrative. I hated the fact that mm -hmm. and all my friends who are doing amazing things are seen mm -hmm. as coming from this school that's like lesser than or something. So it's like, mm -hmm. nah, like we should be able to create a network of really amazing kids who are graduating from these schools and connect them to each other. Mm -hmm. And figure out how, because one thing that I noticed also was that my friends wanted to give back, but they, it wasn't like they mm. were about to walk back into their high school, you know, right. and like just do all of these, you know, jump through all these hoops to, to, I don't know, do something at a high school. But if I call them and say, hey, you know, I'm having something on a Saturday, um, mm -hmm. if you want to come out and just talk to some kids for a couple minutes yeah. about how you got mm -hmm. to where you got to, 
you know, would you be interested in doing that? And, and a whole bunch of them have, like, over the years. And some of them have ended up joining the board and, like, are now right. participating in the programming, helping us raise money, um, hosting events, all these different things. Mm -hmm. So as much as it was, you know, me kind of saying, yeah, I'm going to do this. And even if we don't get, you know, the funding, I'm going to put the money in to do it. It has been about a lot of my friends and my network that have just supported this program because like even now, yeah. like, nothing would be happening without any, with, without the board, without all the people who do mm -hmm. the work. Right. Um, right. So, and I guess just, just from that, the mentorship piece of it has kind of grown. Yep. I one of the things that you know and of course i'm always thinking about what we can be doing better right and i think that's just something that yeah. happens when you when you create something you always see its faults first yeah then yep 100 like, you know so mm -hmm. i look at this and i'm like man how do we get more kids to attend the events you know like do we need to move mm -hmm. the time frame it's not not like good enough um how do we engage with them while they're at school you know when we don't see mm -hmm. them um because there are some kids that you know, it, they just always have some kind of conflict when it comes to the event. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, how do we connect them to the kids coming behind them? So we're doing a lot of work now with our alumni because I, I want to say we have maybe 12 to 13 alumni. So we're like, could we get wow. into a position where like alumni now become the new mentors and they end up like mm -hmm. doing this job that the board and myself have been doing um, and wow. it almost it becomes a cycle. And that's literally what right. it was intended to be two or three years ago when we when we laid all this out. Because again, we didn't start mm -hmm. this way. Um, it it kind of just grew into this. I had friends from Stony Brook who did the original branding and the naming of this whole thing. Because, I, and and I think that's that's the other thing too about like even if somebody was to to start this, like leverage your network, talk to people, you know, mm -hmm. um, figure out things that you could be doing better, and and be open to that. Because we've changed a lot of things, and we're still changing things. Um, yeah yeah so i mean i mean from its inception it's like i said until now it's like an amazing thing you know um and i remember like one of the first groups things that they that, like when you present the scholarships and um we all do mentorship uh activities um be, before you present um uh the, uh the scholarships i think that was like, like, like the first year um mm -hmm. and we sat outside um, and we all just kind of like, like campfire style, um, sharing mm -hmm. stories and, and mentoring of the, of the students. And that was something that I thought that was, that was super dope. Um, and you were only 20. Right. And I was like, man, like, this is going to be amazing. Um, mm -hmm. and then fast forward now, um, when you had the, uh, the big gala, the, you know, the B&B yeah. &B foundation gala that you had. And I'm looking around and I'm and I'm like, wow, like you got you got painters, you got you, you had all types of uh, I think you had singers too, like that everything. You pulled out all the stops. Um and it and it was super amazing. And I was like, man, uh, wow. And you actually behind my back, you co founded another nonprofit, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um I didn't even know about that. I, I just actually saw that um I think the other day and I was like, she had another one? Um, so talk to us about that nonprofit because I had no clue about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so after I left that company in Alabama, I joined a program called Venture for America, which is a fellowship mm -hmm. for um, recent graduates who are interested in entrepreneurship. So right. Andrew Yang, who ran for president randomly, used to be, mm -hmm. the, um, was the founder of Venture for America. So he quit wow. to like, go campaign like the year after I graduated mm -hmm. so like have okay. met Andrew Yang like he actually donated to the foundation strange so because then wow. he like became this person you're like oh wow okay um mm -hmm. so so came down to Miami and um at the time I think I had known I had wanted to get involved because I just really loved Miami I still love Miami right why I'm in that New York well well, I mean, there's a lot of good reasons to love Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was just, it was just, now it just feels like a second home. So um, mm -hmm. I think it was, I don't even know, maybe, maybe, maybe six months into being there um, at a family reunion and met my um, cousin's fiance, I think at the time. And we were just talking mm -hmm. and she, she came up to me and we, you know, first time met, she's like, you know, what? oh my God, like that's so, 
she didn't even know at this point that I had the foundation in New York. She was just like, I would love mm -hmm. to start a scholarship for girls. Like, mm -hmm. in Florida. Wow. And I was like, wow. just want to tell you to like, talk to me about this. Wow. And she was like, no, like, I really just, I just something I'm passionate about and I would love for it to be around technology because I feel like women really need that space. And her not knowing wow. anything about my background, the fact that I've worked in STEM and engineering and all mm -hmm. of this. And I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, so we gonna do this. Because what I didn't want to do was come down <laughs> to a, a place that I was not familiar with and automatically be like, right. oh, I know what I'll need. I'm going to create this. Thing. Right. Right. Because it, mm -hmm. it's, it's not authentic. It also mm -hmm. just, it felt weird to, to be like, you know what, this needs to be fixed. Right. So there's an aspect mm -hmm. of having Natalie involved in this that's just so, like, mm -hmm. she's from South Florida, born and raised. Like, she's the She knows the layout. Like, yeah. yeah really do this and then combined with at this point I think we had been doing the foundation for almost four to five years like mm -hmm. we had the infrastructure we have made all of the mistakes so mm -hmm. when strong her started and my co-founder is also brilliant with marketing so when I mm -hmm. tell you like the site was amazing the branding was done right from jump um we had a relationship um, a fiscal sponsorship with one of the um foundations in um in south florida for us to be able to take in donations and do everything mm -hmm. legit from the beginning and not to say that bnb wasn't legit it was but we were using um and then when i say fiscal sponsorship so that just means um instead of applying for a 501c3 an organization right. that already has that donates it to you so um, gotcha. they let you do that and in some cases like for bnb um, they they didn't charge us to take in those donations. They just held it for us, and then they dispersed the checks. The um, wow. the foundation that we used in Florida, they took up like a management fee percentage, but it was still we were still able to like anybody who donated got that letter, you know, that tax deductible mm -hmm. letter. So from the like so because we knew okay we need to get these things done, we were right. able to to start off strong her just from the jump, and I think we ended up getting like a five hundred or six hundred um like right off mm -hmm. the back and wow. we were able to take that in and be able to actually then you know disperse that money because we had the infrastructure set up so that's something that you know just her knowledge and mine together it, mm -hmm. it became like it was just very strong from the beginning um and i think stem for sure was just something we were really both passionate about and i could speak for right. days on just the importance of women specifically in this industry because it is mm -hmm. so heavily white male dominated. You need to know mm -hmm. some things before you go into this space. Um, even if it's if even if it's just, you know, how do you how do you speak in a room when everybody's talking over you? Right? Like or how do right. you because they're already mm -hmm. gonna notice you. They're already gonna know you there because you don't look like anybody. And I feel like even mm -hmm. even at this job, for the first maybe three or four months, I just sat back and listened for a while just to mm -hmm. see how everyone kind of moved and operated. And I had people come up to me and say, well, you didn't say anything in that meeting. And I said, okay, I just got I here. To. What do you want me yeah. to do? Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm still learning the job, you know? When right. I have something to say, I will say it, right? right? But I think that's also, you know, but if I hadn't known that about myself, like mm -hmm. I could have internalized that and then went into the next right. meeting just talking foolishness and not really knowing that that's the reason right. why you know so so in that space it's just it's just so important I think that mentorship in any field but in the STEM field mm -hmm. particularly because it's something that I know so right now we have we awarded six girls our first year and we opened up in six high schools in South Florida wow. three in Miami Dade and three in Broward um, right wow. off the bat um, mm -hmm. that, because I think what was different about that from BNB is that BNB, we had relationships with those schools for the most part. Right. Um, strong her was like cold call. It was like, we just walked into the high schools and we're like, hi, this is who we are. This is what we want to do. Here's the website. Can you have the girls apply by this date? Wow. And then we were just consistent. Boss. We just followed up, yeah. and followed up and followed up. And, wow. and one of the things that like I had told Natalie and, and that and the reason why we did that is because it's one thing to just email somebody but the other thing is that the schools we're going into are predominantly black and brown so all of the guidance counselors amazing are overworked or you know they have too many kids they're not going through all their emails like that mm -hmm. so for them to understand that this is important we have to go there we have to talk to them they have to see our faces mm -hmm. so that when they hear strong right. her future 
they see Brianna and they see Natalie and they mm. say, yes, this is it. Um, mm -hmm. And this year we did very little promotion for the scholarship and we got 15 right. applications. Mm -hmm. And we weren't expecting that many at all just because of um, wow. COVID. So, um, you know, it, it's been amazing. Natalie is amazing. I mean, right mm -hmm. now we, we just chose the, the next three. So we're actually going to have nine now total recipients of the scholarship in Florida. Um, wow. So between them and BNB, we're looking at like 50 kids strong, like, so you've already provided 50 scholarships, almost 50 scholarships to be, to these young kids. Um, and a lot of them look like just you and me. Um, mm -hmm. So if you had any kind of advice for, let's just say, high schoolers com are coming out um, who want to get into in engineering or do STEM or, or, or anything like that, or just any type of general um, advice that you would give them um, mm -hmm. going into college, what would that be? Yeah, so this is this is funny. So my brother and I had a little talk with one of our cousins about this yesterday. And um, I think it, it starts in, in two ways, right? And it also depends on your family and what's expected of you, right? So like, mm -hmm. my brother and I, like, we didn't really have a choice. Like, my mom was like, Oh, so y'all going to colleges, look at these things, apply, da, 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 right? Like, it wasn't even, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and especially just, you know, Jama Jamaican mother, right? And, mm -hmm, and that, yeah. it was like, okay, so you're going to get a major in something that you can get a job in, right? And, mm -hmm. and what you hear echoed a lot, especially I think in, in immigrant households, black households, is um, doctor, lawyer, engineer, right? So I was like, I'm not going to do the doctor. Could do the <laughs> lawyer, but then that's a lot of school, and I don't want to mm -hmm. pay school. <laughs> like, that's for you. Right, right, right. Um, and I was like, engineer, okay, kind of good at math. Maybe this could be a thing. Um, and even mm -hmm. after like I, I graduated, I ended up gra gravitating more towards business than I have an MBA. So that's kind right. of where I am now. I just have a technical background. Mm -hmm. um, and that's right. the space where I flourish, kind of like understanding the technical, but also understanding the business mm -hmm. and being able to kind of translate between both. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would recommend to students is, first of all, figure out what you don't like to do. And college mm -hmm. is a great way to do that because you're able to take right. a variety of different classes and you know maybe have some mm -hmm. research experiences with professors or have internships um, to figure out the things that you that don't move you you know like i think after right. my first or second internship um, at the the company that i used to work for um, it just wasn't like, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, engineering is cool, but I don't want to do this every day. I, wanna, I don't want to just keep fixing broken things, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's kind of, and that was just one of the things that was in. I was like, I, I kind of like this aspect of, like, how do we make a process better and then keep it mm -hmm. better? Like, how do we increase efficiency? That was the kind of stuff right. that, I was, like, I have an organizational mind. I love talking with, like, um, like, just folks who have so many ideas and be like, okay, mm -hmm. how do we execute? You know, that's the right. way that, that, that I've always worked. And, and I know that about myself because I've, I've had a lot of different experiences. So that would be the first thing that I say is kind of like, mm -hmm. do things, you know, get, get around, like try and figure out the things that you like. And, and if it is STEM, um, you know, there, there is an aspect of, of, you know, having a mentor that is super crucial to you. When I was an intern and in this inroads program, you were assigned a mentor. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. I was talking to her about this, I said, you know, I want to experience the different, like, I want to learn more about this organization to figure out what I like and what right. I don't like. So she introduced me to somebody um, who was closer to the manufacturing side of things as opposed to the engineering mm -hmm. thing. So figure engineering right. is the one designing things, the one fixing things that are broken. Manufacturing is the one that's actually putting it together. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I coined is just like, on the manufacturing shop floor is where everything comes mm -hmm. together and falls apart. Because if your design mm -hmm. is is shitty, you know, like, you're gonna see it when you try to put it together. So right. um, she introduced me to, to this guy who um, happens to be white and has, like, this this man um, really is just, was just instrumental to my growth mm -hmm. and development at this company. And um, as he began to move up in the company, um, he was the one mm -hmm. who actually got promoted to work at the facility in Alabama. So when I rotated down there after I had been working full time, um, we had we were all kind of taking turns going down to that site. 
we had a meeting and he said, I have a job for you here. So I didn't even mm -hmm. really apply. He was kind of like, I want you to come down here and, and, and work with me and work for me because, um, and I don't think you should stay in this job longer than two years. It will be the hardest job right. you ever have. And you are a black woman from New York and you're moving down south. So you need to think about mm -hmm. all those things before you decide whether you want to take this job or not. And was just yeah. very, you know, no nonsense kind of person. And I respect him so much for that. Um, mm -hmm. And when I did end up deciding, I remember, so, you know, Tiffany, so I remember this yeah. day completely. We were sitting in Atelana's room and we Googled the town in Alabama where this, where this place was located. And the population of this town was less than Stony Brook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was less than Stony Brook University. And we were just like, you really going to do this? <laughs> so, but it was just, Yeah, I, I'll never forget when you told me that you was going to Alabama. I was like, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Of all the places down south to go, you, oh, all right. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't spend <laughs> very much time in the actual state. Um, went to yeah. Atlanta a lot, went to New Orleans, got to travel around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, yeah, so securing that mentor and really, you know, like, having that opportunity and just some of the things I was even able to do at the plants. And I think the way I was treated and respected was also different because they knew I had his mm -hmm. ear. They knew I was reporting up to him and saying, Hey, this is what I'm doing. These are the problems mm -hmm. I'm running into. So it was a certain level of like, like we can't really touch her because the person who runs this plant is who she's really reporting to right. and why. She so um, that was just, like and that was, and then like maybe towards like the last four to five months I was there, he left. He got promoted to go someplace mm -hmm. else. But when I tell you after mm -hmm. I, I collected that MBA that they paid for, I was like, How are we getting out of this? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I, I need to be here. <laughs> yeah. It's um, different down there, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so for sure. So like finding finding someone to vouch for you is something, you know, as as you mm -hmm. go through school, you have to find that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess tell the people how they can get involved with the BNB Foundation and the other foundation that you co-founded. Um, I yeah. think that's super important. So we have, so we're on Instagram, obviously. So the BNB Foundation and then um, yep. at Strong Her for both of them. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, direct, the most direct ways to get involved would be to donate, right? Um, mm -hmm. Of course. You are able Right, um, those scholarships mm. go directly to um, those mo those monies go directly to scholarships and to our scholarship mm. and mentorship programming. Um, if you'd mm -hmm. like to be a mentor, um, we're actually looking for mentors for Strong Her this year. So Strong Her's mentorship program is a little bit different than BNB's. We don't host as many mm -hmm. events as BNB does. Right. So our our um, real, really path to the girls there is through mentors. So if you know any women who are in um, stem or steam mm -hmm. um that's really what we're looking for now um and then for bnb um same same thing goes like we're, we're trying to build out this mentorship program we always love mm -hmm. to have people at our events um who can add perspective mm -hmm. um we have a right. lot of students um i think we're pretty even as far as majors go but the majority of our students are um in the healthcare field so we're always looking for folks who are you know residents or or doctors or in medical school mm -hmm. or you know um still in undergrad but that's the path that they're going on to kind of educate some of our freshmen and sophomores on really what this is about because what i think we've found is that specifically in these communities that we're going into which are predominantly black and brown you're going they're going into the healthcare field. It's not necessarily because they mm -hmm. like that, but because their mother is a nurse. And it's something right. that they've always been told is a good path to go. And while it is, if you're not passionate mm -hmm. about it, you're not going to enjoy it. So, right. um, you know, and, and to, to have somebody who, you know, is doing it and is passionate about it, they will tell you it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work mm -hmm. to go through that. So that's the type of people we want to expose them to, to really test, is this something you want to get into and that you want to do? So. Awesome. Yeah, mental. Cool. And, um, yeah. Good. So I, I know I um, probably got about maybe four minutes left. Um, so for one, I just want to say thank you for doing this all with me. Um, Brianna Brown, you are an inspiration to us all. Um, I, I mean, it's like I said, you've been involved with the double 
double A SCP since you were fifteen. You got your bachelor's, your master's, engineer, right? Uh, you co you founded your own nonprofit. You have and you co-founded another nonprofit, and you've given scholarships out to almost fifty, um, you know, black and brown um, um kids. And I just want to say that you are somebody who are needed, who is needed in this world today. We celebrate you. We salute you, black woman. Um, and you're not even 30 yet. So I, I don't even know what this is going to look like when you're over 30. Um, and I can only imagine the greater things that you're going to be doing. Um, and we could all take a page out of your book. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, we salute you. We honor you. Um, and thank you so much for doing this here with me. And I know it helped people. Um, I know it helped me too. Uh, I'm inspired. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me, Terrence. And, and totally, I don't even know now how you even heard that we were doing this event. And when I tell you, when you came to the first ones and then even to the gala and just was able to contribute and add value to that discussion and conversation, that mm -hmm. means the world to me because I know anybody who comes to those events, the kids mm -hmm. take something out of that, but you also take yeah. something away from that too it is just it's, it's mm -hmm. inspiring all around so i really mm -hmm. appreciate what you're doing thank you for inviting me um of course you know, i can't wait to see the more more of these conversations of the heart that are going to come out i'll mm -hmm. definitely tune in um and mm -hmm. i think just as like a clothing thought you know the foundations themselves have just grown into something so much more than what i could have imagined and i encourage mm -hmm. people to always kind of just do the thing, like whatever it is that you're passionate about, don't think so much about the logistics, just do it because then the resources mm -hmm. that you need will come to support you when mm -hmm. you need them. Um, mm -hmm. I truly believe that. And, and just some of the results, even from this, from the scholarships we've given out um, with just some, some of the, the recipients are now starting their own mentorship programs. They're starting mm -hmm. their own scholarships. They're reinvesting in us and joining the board. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy. We never did this with those, um, you know, intentions, but all of these really mm -hmm. positive results are, are coming out of it. So I just encourage everybody to, to just do the thing that you're passionate about, because ultimately mm -hmm. you're the one who has to wake up every day and do it. So. A hundred percent. And I just got in a little bit of an idea. I see Choose Path Wellness. Um, um, she is a black author and she just came out with a journal. Um, and I'm big on mental health and, and, you know, Black, black men in journaling and women in general journaling too. Um, and I'm thinking, um, how about, you know, for your BNB foundation um, as well, we can get some of those journals into the, of the kids' hands as they go into high schools. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, I'm thinking that, um, that we could possibly hook something up. Um, her name is Den Deniqua. Um, she is awesome. And um, she's in the comments now. I'm going to call her later. Um, to see if we can get some of those um, those journals into the kids' hands oh. right as they go into college, because yes. you know it's some, that transition can be tough, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if they could have a, a, an outlet, right, um, to write those things down and to help them guide them through. Um, so I, it, it's called the Glow Journal. Um, it's absolutely um, amazing. Um, so see what what we can do um, and yeah. see how how many that you need. Um, and and we'll make sure um, that that those kids get their hands um, on those journals. I'll make sure that person uh, yes. uh, personally, and you just let me know. Um, even if it's and for the foundation in Miami, same thing. Um, yeah. Let me know how many uh, you need, and we will make sure that we get those journals into these young kids' hands. A hundred percent. Wow! Yeah, that's that's so yeah. awesome. Uh, and so and she uh, yep, and she just says sure. And, and, uh, not, it's not a problem. Inbox me. So wow. call it done. Oh, wow. Thank um, you so much. That, that's so good. Yeah. And she's, and, and she's a young black author too. Um, and um, so we just got to help each other um, and, and get the right tools into these young kids' hands. Yep. Absolutely. Pooh. Absolutely. Perfect. Wow. Um, time, is, time is running out. I will call you later. Um, okay. But thank you for, for coming on. All right. All right. Brianna Brown. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Perfect, everybody. Got 10 seconds left. Tomorrow, Juneteenth, a Father's Day edition of, of Conversations with the Heart.